In this video, I'm going to show you the comparison between PEDIC and Nearpod. I will also tell you when to use Nearpod and when to use PEDIC. Alright, so what I'm going to do is first, I'll give you all the details about PEDIC and with respect to teachers as well as student and once everything is done with respect to PEDIC, we'll move to Nearpod and I'll show you all the different options which we have in Nearpod. All right, so let's get started. Okay, you know that to install any add-on, first you have to go to add-ons, click on get add-ons and you have to search for the add-on. So once you have installed the add-on, again you have to come back to this add-ons and you'll be having peer deck for Google Slides as well as Nearpod. All right, so first, if you just click on this open peer deck add-on, you see, you'll open a particular navigation pane towards the right which says peer deck and you have various options. At top, you see you have template library where you can import any pre-built templates. All right, just come back and then you have list of options. For example, you can add a text, you can add multiple choice question answers, you have website, you have numbers and so on. Please note, you have two more options that is draw and draggable, which are paid options after 30 days. So these two are premium options and you can use them only if you pay for them after your trial is over. And if you come down, you can also add audio to your slide. All right. So if you use this particular add on, what you have to do is you have to go to a particular slide number, let's say slide number two, and you have to choose a particular choice. Let's say if I want to add multiple choice, I'll click here and it will add multiple choice question answers on my particular slide. And you see, once you add it at bottom, you see it gives a particular peer deck logo which you don't have to remove, all right? So for all the slides, if you select all the options, let's see, for the third slide, I have selected text and so on. So I have already built all these slides using this peer deck tool. And please note that this is not about peer deck tutorial. In fact, I have a complete tutorial on peer deck. And if you want to see that, I'll give the link in the I button here, or you can just go to the description of the video and you can just see the link, all right? Let's come back here. And once you have said everything, you just have to go to start a lesson. So once you start the lesson, you see it will take some time and it has two modes. First, you have instructor mode and second, you have student pace mode. So instructor mode is the one where you have the control as an instructor and student pace mode is the one where your student will be having more control and based on their availability, they can take the activity. All right. So I'll just select student pace mode. All right, so let me just start it. Okay, let me just close everything. And here it says you have to go to teacher dashboard. So I'll just go to teacher dashboard. And before that, I should have a particular link. So let's say if you forget the link, you can just join this code. You see here you have this link, just copy it, just close it. And here I'll just give this particular link. And you see, this is the link, just give enter. And this is the link through which a student will join your lesson. All right. And now you can start your lesson activity as student. You see, if I just click on this next button, I can just select an option. You see, I selected this option that is option one. And as a teacher, you see, as a teacher, I can see the response from student. Similarly, as a student, if I just move forward here, I can write anything, for example, fine. So this is a text option. And here the student has to write a particular text or list of text. All right. As a teacher, I can see that if I go to slide number three, this is what the response is from Sandeep. So he is one of the student. And again, as a student, if I move forward, you see, I can have these two flags, which I can set anywhere based on the question. And at this moment, this is not a tutorial on peer deck. So I'm just writing fast and I'll move forward. Here you have a drawing option. Right. So you have pencil, then you have highlighter and so on. Using pencil, you see, you can draw anything. And then using text, you can add anything. You see here, I can just add, let's say French verbs. All right. You can erase also and you can undo it as well as you can clear it. Right. So let's say if I have added everything, I can see the response from the student in my teacher dashboard. So if I come here, you see it shows the response from the student. All right. Let's come back again to student. And let me move forward. So you see, if I just add a number here, let's say five, or I can just write four because Kotr or Kat in French is four. 
So if I just write 4, you see as a teacher, I can see the response which is 4. Alright. And then at the end, I want to show a website to my student. So I'll just refer a website and this is the website I'll refer. Right. So this is how you can show the presentation to your students using Peer Deck. Alright. Let me just come back to teacher's account and I can just end this session. So I'll just click on this end button and here it says are you sure you want to end the session I'll click yes and what happens is you can just give the name of this particular session let's give peer deck demo all right I've just given a random name you have to give a meaningful name all right just click on this save and end session and now just wait for some time and you see it gives a particular takeaway link and you can share this link with your students and also you can share this link to Google Classroom all right Let's come back to Google Slides. As a student, I can just see this particular report so that I can get an instant feedback what I have done. All right, so this is the report and you see it gives the summary also and then response, right? And you can just see that based on what your student has filled in the presentation. Now the important point here is, if I come to Peer Deck, see, let me just go to add-ons let me just open this peer deck add-on and I'll just show you a few options why I like peer deck and why I don't like peer deck also. So you see here, if I want to quickly set up my Google Slides presentation lesson, what I do is normally I use peer deck because it has limited options. You see, it has text, it has multiple choice question answers, website and so on. So the advantage of using peer deck is its simplicity. All right. It is not having so many options compared to Nearpod, which I'm going to show you in just a couple of minutes. Originally, it was built as a Google Slides add-on, and that is the reason it goes well with Google Slides. Coming back to Nearpod, you see, for Nearpod, again, you have to go to add-ons, and you have to just go to get add-ons, search for the name Nearpod, and install it. Once you install this add-on, again, come back to this add-on, and you have to select this add-on, just open this, right? So once I'll open it, I'll just show you that there are a lot of options in Nearpod compared to Peer Deck. All right. So you see here, it has all the options, for example, audio. So you can add audio, you have BBC video, and then you have collaborate mode, which is a very good feature, which is missing in Peer Deck. Similarly, you have Droid feature, which is also there in Peer Deck. You have fill tape. So field trip is a sort of virtual reality which is not there in Peer Deck at this moment. And this is a very good feature using which you can just go to a virtual trip or tour with your students. Again, you have fill in the blanks, which is also a good feature. Then you have flip grid, matching pairs. Then you have memory test, you have Nearpod 3D. And this Nearpod 3D is also good using which you can add a 3D object to your lesson. All right, you have open-ended question, which is simply like a text all right, then you have PDF viewer, then you have polls, you have quizzes, you have simulation, you have slide so sway, time to climb, and so on. So you see there are a lot of options in Nearpod, and that is the reason I say that Nearpod is much richer version of Peer Deck. And if you if you see this option that is time to climb, what happens is you can play a game with your students using this particular option. So your students will come one by one. And once all your students come together, you can start this game and the person or the student who gains the maximum point will reach at the top. All right. So this is all about time to climb, which is a very good feature. Then you can embed a video and you have web content, which is same as like adding a particular link, which is also there in Peer Deck. But if you compare with Peer Deck, there are at least seven to eight options which are present in Nearpod and these options are not there in Peer Deck. All right. So let me just show you, I have created this slide and this slide, that is slide number two, I have added a collaborate board. Similarly, in slide number three, I have added a draw it object. Okay. So you see, if I just go up, I have this draw it feature, which is same as in peer deck. And you see, if I just come down, I have matching pairs also. Then we have fill in the blanks. We have quizzes. We have time to climb. So this time to climb is a very good game. I'll show you in a couple of minutes. And then you have virtual 3D, which is called a field trip. Okay. So using this, you can just add a virtual reality object and it will look as if you are present at that particular moment in that particular picture itself. 
all right so this is also a very good feature and at the end i have also added a poll so normally what happens is i end my presentation with a feedback or poll all right so once you have set up everything you have to just click on save and go to nearpod okay if you just click on this what happens is you will go to nearpod library you see here it is trying to save it now you see that it is done and at the top you have three dots if you click on this it says you can share it with your teachers you can duplicate it you can add to a particular folder and i use this feature a lot so what happens is if you try to create a lesson randomly it will come here and sit so what i do is i used to create a folder and i keep all my lesson in a particular folder so that it will be easy for me to refer back all right again you see that you have an option to remove from folder and so on and you also have an option of reports and i'll show you how reports will look like in a couple of minutes and before this you see here you can share this with your students as live participation with zoom or you can directly have live participation in which you can directly share it with your students in a live mode and it will create a lot of better interactiveness but at this moment i'll just go to student paste because i have already shown about live participation in my nearpod tutorial so if you want to know exactly what is nearpod and how it is used then i have already added a tutorial on nearpod please go back to my channel and just watch from a playlist all right so at this moment i'll just click on this student paste and again what it will do is it will create a code and you have to share this code with your students using which they'll join this particular presentation all right so let me just copy this code and there are various ways to share this particular code you see at the bottom you can share it with microsoft teams then you have remind you have google classroom then you have link and so on and the best way is always to share it using this particular link or through this code so let me just copy this through a link so you see this is my link and i'll just copy this go back as a student let's say if i just copy this link now this is like a student all right i'll just show you how student will interact with this particular lesson through which they will engage more with your lesson all right so let me just open it it will take some time now this is optional to give the name so i'll just give for example let's say sandy let's start it and let me just move forward let's say it says write about three formatting tags i can just write something okay so i've just written something random and clicked on post and you see your post is now appearing here all right and that is the reason it is called as collaborate board because all the answers will show like a board okay in that board all the answers will be shown so let me come back as a teacher and i think we were here right so just close this at this moment i can just close this or what i can do is i can just click on this view progress button to just see the progress of my lesson so if i just click on this now you see that it says that sandy is one of the student who is logged in right just move forward and now if i just move forward you see it will give me a particular alert that this slide is a collaborate board do you want to approve student comments before they have posted if i just click yes you see they have given me this particular comment from a student and i can also show the student name if i just come down just click on this show student name it will just give the name of the student all right so it says sandy and he has given this particular comment similarly as a student if i move forward you see i can add something it is similar to what we have in peer deck so for example i can add a text here let's say if i just add a text or i can draw something for example let me just draw it all right and once i have done everything i can just submit it just click on submit button and you see as a teacher i can move forward and i can see what my student has done so you see it says sandy awaiting drawing so what happens is it takes some time for teacher to get the actual feedback so if i just click here you see this is what the student has drawn right so just close it go back to student and you see he can select anything from this matching pairs let's say for example scripting language let's say he chooses html which is wrong again for java if he chooses programming language which is right and for css and javascript let's say he select this wrong answer move forward you see it will give the instant feedback to teacher so you see if i just move forward this is what it will give the feedback to the teacher that one answer is right and two answers are wrong similarly let's move forward and let's say at this moment 
this particular activity has not been done by any of the students so you see that it is just showing that fill in the blanks and then student is sandy but it is not showing the score because student has not taken this activity let's say he takes this activity if i just randomly write anything for example let me just select it i think it is you have to be very precise actually here okay let me just click on done just close it just come back here and now it will show you the answers and even you can view the answers you see if i just click here it will show me the answers as well and again come back as a student just keep on going so this is a quiz which i'm not going to take at this moment i'll just click submit anyways because i have not filled any data because the point is not to show how to use nearpod the point is the comparison and various options which you get in nearpod versus pear deck all right just move forward now this is the game i was talking about this is called as time to climb you see the music starts coming and then you can select a particular character let's check and if you select this particular character go to start all right just wait for some time and now you see this particular game has started and all of the students will play the game at the same time if i click this particular option let's say meta author tutorial brain and this is right and then it says that you are sandy and you have done a nice work as a teacher you see if i just move forward i'll just show you as a teacher how it looks like first let me just come back and move forward as a student and this is what your student has done so you see sandy has got 845 points and he is the top in the leaders list all right let's move forward and again come back to the student list and this is the vr object i was talking about this is the field trip so you see here as a student i can just go to this vr object and you can watch it anywhere you see it appears as if you are present at that particular moment all right you can do you see you can slide you can just go to left you can just go to right and so on so you can just go to this particular place with your teachers as well all right let's move forward and please mind that this particular feature that is vr feature that is field trip is not available in pear deck all right and here you say that your feedback please and the student i mean all of your student has to give the feedback or poll so at this moment you see i ask how was the session or your feedback please they can select anything i'll just select happy click on submit button and you see everything is done and you see here at the bottom you have notes navigator using which you can go to any particular note for example you see here i can just come towards left or towards right all right and as a teacher you see i have an option here at the top to see the report you see that it has given you all the options which were selected by students and even you can share it with other teachers or a student and ask them to improve or what was wrong or what was right and so on all right so you can see that there are many options which are not present in peer deck but even if you try to compare the pricing also i think nearpod is having little more price because it is offering you more features as well all right so this is my take if you want to quickly set up your presentation and make it simple then use peer deck but if you want to use multiple features and make it even more engaging and you want to make it at a different pro level then it is better to go with nearpod and again the pricing is also a major factor peer deck is normally at a lesser price but if you go with nearpod you have to pay a little more all right so that's the take overall so that's it if you like this video please click on the like button please share the video to your friends family members and social media all right and if you want to have a complete tutorial on peer deck or nearpod you can just go back to my channel and see i have a very good video or i have rather two videos one on nearpod one on peer deck you can watch both of them and in case if you have any doubt please message in the comment section and please let me know which one are you going to use are you going to use peer deck or you are going to use nearpod and again which feature in nearpod you like the most and which feature in peer deck you like most all right so with this let's close this video thanks take care bye